I'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday worship at Bethel Lutheran Church. This is the fourth of our Advent Wednesdays, and the theme for this Wednesday is peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the peace that goes beyond our understanding, the peace that comes only from you. We pray for peace on earth. We pray for peace in our hearts. We pray that you would instill your levels of peace deep inside of us. Grant us your Holy Spirit as we continue our journey to Christmas and as we celebrate your entrance into the world, for you are God with us. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone, for you are our Redeemer, Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Well, grace and peace to you from, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ, who was, who is, and who will always. We are the last of the four Wednesdays in Advent, and our, our weeks have been framed by the word hope, the word love, the word joy, and now peace. And to reiterate a little bit, that hope that we talked about the first week is expectation, anticipation. Uh, really, it has to do with our belief in what is to come. Love is something which is very concrete. We, um, we talk about love in many ways in our society, but this love is not just a respectful love, but it's being held by someone, uh, always 
having someone with you. And when we talk about love in that way, it's God's love that comes to us, holding us in our weakest moments. And last week it was about joy, really something that wells up inside of us that, that just can't be contained. Joy in the midst of mourning. It's a hard pill to swallow, and yet the scriptures say that God can bring his joy into our lives. Today it's all about peace, peace that uh, passes our understanding, surpasses anything we can imagine. In our world, we see peace really focusing on relationships and those relationships being between friends, family members, and also countries. I can't imagine a time where we have been in perfect peace in our world, a time where everything stops, all the wars cease. In my lifetime, we've gone through Vietnam, and we've had the Afghanistan wars and Al-Qaeda, um, it just seems like there's always an outbreak, or we look at other countries, it's the same. We can look at our city streets and we see that there's no peace. Uh, there's racial problems between different races. There's inequity between peoples. So we have marches on the streets, peaceful work, peaceful marches, that end up not being so peaceful at times. So our world is filled with unrest. And maybe that's the place we look at when it comes to the word peace. I'd like to read to you from Luke's Gospel, one of the most familiar of all the texts that are read every Christmas, it's beginning with the shepherds in the field. This is Luke 2 beginning with verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. But those words, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all those on whom his favor rests. Peace. Wow. Amazing. The word shows up in the scriptures 250 times. Don't you love those little tidbits? And when we say peace in our world, I already said, we think of wars. In the church, we use phrases like, the peace be with you, the Lord's peace be with you. And the response is, and also with you. We take it as just a greeting. We take it as something we just say. At the end of the service, I always say these words, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The words of the benediction come out of Numbers and Deuteronomy. They were back in the day, have been spoken not only for Christians, but for Jewish people, over centuries of blessing and give you peace. Shalom is the real word. And though it may refer at times to wars, 
Shalom peace is something that is a lot deeper. The word actually means to be safe in your mind, your body, or your estate. In other words, your whole being is to be at peace. To know that there's something that brings a completeness to you. That's the word shalom. That's the phrase of peace. So in essence, when the angels were saying, and peace to all those on whom God's favor rests, it's, I'm going to bring into completeness that which has been destroyed. Isn't that an interesting thought? The Christmas is really the beginning of God bringing into complete, completeness that which was broken. We talk about that at Easter time on Good Friday. Atonement, that which was broken is now bridged. That's really shalom. Something deep inside of us. Jesus says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. Paul writes in Philippians and in other places as well, the peace that passes all understanding. This Advent season, as we come closer and closer to Christmas, it's as though God's fullness is solidifying itself inside of us. That there's something when we sing the carols and the songs that brings a wholeness to our heart. When we stand with candles and sing Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. It's really about the peace of God which entered this world. God is with us, which means now things can be complete. Take time over this next week. Christmas begins on the 25th. It doesn't end until the 6th of January. Take those days, those 12 days of Christmas, to become peaceful days. In Isaiah chapter 9, we read these words. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. May he rule for us, and let us pray. O oh God, in a world that seems very broken, in a world that feels at total unrest. We pray for your peace that passes all understanding to guard us and keep our minds on Christ Jesus our Lord. Come to us in our prayers. Come to us at those silent moments. Come to us when the world is so busy we can't stand it. And bring us, O oh Lord, your shalom peace. This we ask in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.